Hello, I'm Michael Amadori, working for The Most, helping to run some of their outreach programs. Today we're going to talk about the CNY Build Em and Bust Them Bridges event. So what you see here is our testing platform to find out if bridges do or do not qualify for the event. Um, we have several examples of bridges that are successfully able to qualify and some not so much. All the design requirements and specifications to build your bridge can be found on most.org slash bridges. In particular, you'll notice the size requirements. These are very, very important that you follow the size requirements. The day of the event, you'll come with your bridge and it gets tested on here to make sure it fulfilled all the size requirements. So, you have your length of the bridge can only be 250 to 300 millimeters. The width has to be 50 to 75 millimeters and the height must fit in here no higher than 100 millimeters. One of our other key testing requirements is that this block must be able to pass through the bridge to show that it's gonna be able to be a fully functioning bridge. You'll see example of past bridges, which while they may fulfill the, lit, the length and height requirement, this block is unable to pass through there, and therefore this bridge does not qualify. Other bridges have shown up without any type of truss system. While this bridge, again, it passes through and meets our design requirements for its size requirements, it does not actually have any form of trust and is not eligible to be competed with in our competition. So it's very important that you read the length, width, and height requirements within the documents provided on our website. Another thing I'm pointing out is how the bridges are going to be tested. This small 5 by 5 centimeter square is where the load is going to be applied for the bridges. For our category 1 and 2, the load is applied underneath meaning there must be a spot on your bridge where this square can be placed and then the day of the competition a load is brought down on here to figure out how much weight your bridge can hold. For the category 3 high school bridges the load is applied from the top and it's very important that there's a spot on the top of your bridges where a load can get through and be pushed down so we can figure out how much weight your bridge can support. These are crucial, crucial design requirements, and if there's no spot to put the testing block, it would be very difficult for you to compete the day of the competition. So make sure you have a spot for your testing block to go. So another important aspect I want to discuss is the concept of lamination. You're not allowed to laminate if you're competing in the category one or two. It's only in the high school groups by laminating. So what do I mean by that? If you'll notice these two separate bridges, here on the bottom, the bridge deck here has two of our sticks glued completely together. That is a process called lamination. You'll see it on both ends and going vertical here. That's on their bridge deck. That is perfectly okay if you're competing in the high school group, but if you're not, you're not allowed to laminate. Here, here you will notice there are no sticks glued side by side completely together. So that's what we refer to as the process of lamination. And again, it's only allowed in the high school bridges. And it's explained in our documents, which can be found on the website, most.org slash bridges. You can always re reach out to us on our email at events coordinator at most.org if you have any questions. We'd be happy to explain the rules further. Thank you for watching. Good luck.